Gabby Williams lives with a mysterious medical condition that prevents her from growing and aging. She is almost nine years old, but her body is still that of a newborn baby. Her condition is so rare, it has no name and has only been seen in a handful of cases around the world. She still has skin, like a, a baby type skin. Two years ago, her family embarked on a journey to discover why their daughter wasn't growing. But state-of-the-art medical testing failed to provide doctors with a diagnosis. Well, at this point, we have no idea as to the cause of Gabby's condition. Now, new cases have emerged that could shed light on this unusual syndrome. Jeffrey may look like a 10-year-old boy, but he is actually a 29-year-old man. Jeffrey, compared to a normal person, is growing at snail speed. And a 31-year-old woman who is still the size of a toddler. Can these extraordinary people help one doctor solve the mystery behind why they're not aging? And will a trip across America give Gabby's family the answers they've been searching for? Gabby Williams is growing at the equivalent of one year in every eight due to an inexplicable condition that has baffled medical science. It has left her partially blind, unable to speak, and functioning like a baby. Gabrielle is just amazing. Her face still looks young. She still has skin, like a, a baby type skin. If you feel her skin, it's still super soft. Gabby may look like a newborn, but she's actually eight years old. She weighs only 11 pounds, five times smaller than the average girl her age. Well, Gabrielle may be little, but she is eight years old. And so I don't think it's fair always to make her presented as this newborn baby. She's a girl. She's an eight-year-old girl. I always think it's pretty when we have her hair, like like the other girls, you know, with her long hair. There's my dolly. Gabby is the second oldest of six Williams children, but she appears much younger than her siblings. Luke, Maya, Anthony, Sophia, and Alina are all growing at a normal rate, while Gabby stays just like a baby. It's hard to believe, but at two feet tall, Gabby's smaller than her newest baby brother, Luke, who's a one-year-old. Luke is our youngest, and then Maya, who will be two, in, end of March. So they've outgrown Gabby within the first six months, but she's still their big sister. When Gabby was one, she could feed like a typical baby, but still hardly grew compared to her two-year-old sister, Sophia. By the time Gabby was five, Anthony and Alina had arrived, and in only three months, they were bigger than Gabby. Now Gabby is eight, and her youngest siblings, Luke and Maya, have already outgrown her. What do you call this, Sophia? Um, pedicure or man manicure? Manicure. Let's do the pedicure with your toes. We do fancy things with Gabby because girls like to be pretty. Gabby's a girl. Even though she's small and she doesn't grow very well, she's still a girl. Always with Gabrielle, her hair has always grown. Her fingernails grow like wildfire crazy. We're always fighting to mm -hmm. cut down. I think we're going to go with this color. Well, we always oh. do that color on her, though. Do we? <laughs> you like this color? I know you do. It looks good on you. You know, we're not gonna put makeup on her. I mean, we haven't yet. Anymore. We have. Have we? Oh yes. Makeup. Remember with from the, her, oh, her, her seven her. year old birthday, she oh, had makeup. She had her. Um, yeah. We have. Yeah. Okay. So now you're ready for the ball. She's Cinderella after the bibbidi bobbidi boo. After the bibbidi bobbidi boo. Absolutely. Morning, guys. How are ya? Doing good. Today, Gabby is accompanying her mom as she drops sister Sophia at school. Good morning, guys. Good morning. 
Sophia and Gabrielle are 14 months apart, so you got to think that they're very similar in age. And Sophia's classroom, that age of little girl, I think it is at the stage where they like to pretend to be mommies and like to carry babies around. If Gabby was growing at a normal rate, she'd be only one grade below Sophia's classmates and almost as tall. Instead, they can hold her like a doll. They look at Gabrielle and say, oh, look at the baby. And I say, oh, she's eight years old. No way. I can't believe that's how old she is, you know. Some of them are a little fearful of Gabrielle, I think. They're not quite sure what to do with yeah. her. That's how they are, too. And then they get over it and just play with her. It's okay. Okay, goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 See you later. Gabby's condition has not only affected her growth, it's also left her fragile and susceptible to illness. This year she had the influenza A and sick to the point that we thought she was dying or on her way to be done. After 10 days on oxygen, Gabby improved and she made a full recovery. But the mental scars of those two weeks are still fresh for Mary Margaret. It's frustrating and difficult because the, the doctors don't know how to treat her or, or don't know necessarily what to do with her. Almost 2,000 miles away in Tampa, Florida, there's a scientist who may be able to shed some light on this extraordinary case. Dr. Richard Walker has been studying the science of aging for over half a century. My whole career has been focused on the aging process. The major question has been, what is the cause of aging? We know what the consequences are. We see them all the time. But I want to know why we are getting older. Two years ago, Dr. Walker began investigating Gabby's case. I came across Gabby Williams, who was a girl that clearly was not advancing in aging. She appears as an infant then, and she appears as an infant today. So uh, my interest in her is to understand why is she getting older at such a slow rate. Dr. Walker is convinced that the answer must be hidden in her genetic makeup. So he ordered medical tests to look for clues in Gabby's chromosomes. We initiated the genetic analysis with a blood sample that we took from her and did a very simple uh, microscopic examination of the chromosome. Typically, in cases as severe as Gabby's, doctors would expect to find damaged or irregular chromosomes. Amazingly, the results were normal. There was not any indication of any abnormality. It led us to think that we've got to go even deeper here to see if uh, we can find the cause of this. Dr. Walker sent Gabby's blood samples to a specialist lab for a finer grain analysis. There, every microscopic gene in her DNA has been sequenced, a process at the cutting edge of genetic scientific research. There are 25 to 30,000 genes that are actually analyzed. It's possible that within the 25 to 30,000 genes, there is only one that's responsible for this. It is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Coming up, Gabby continues to surprise experts. I have not ever worked with a child like Gabby that doesn't grow. And a new case is discovered that could unlock the mystery behind this rare condition. Mama never thought she'd be swinging around you at 29. Gabby, an eight-year-old girl in the body of a newborn, suffers from an inexplicable medical condition that slows her rate of growth. This condition has only been seen in a handful of cases around the world, baffling medical science. Now, another case has been uncovered that could help doctors better understand this extraordinary phenomenon. Daddy, want to pop some bubbly? Today, Jeffrey is celebrating his 29th birthday with his mom, Pam, and stepdad, Dave. All righty, I'm going to get like Gabby, Jeffrey appears frozen in time, aging the equivalent of just one year in every three. Jeffrey, compared to a normal person, is growing at snail speed. He is growing very, very, very slow. Here's to our 29-year-old baby. He'll always be my baby. Cheers. He seems to be about 10 years old, but developmentally, I would say he's on about a nine-month-old level. So don't break the glass. Jeffrey's condition affects his brain development, leaving him deaf, 
mute, and unable to walk. Bigger bite, bigger bite. Um, he has to be fed. I have to change his diapers, put him to bed every night. I wake him up every morning. He still is a baby. The average 29-year-old man weighs 180 pounds. Jeffrey is only 57 pounds. He is still the size of a boy. And just like Gabby, no one knows why. Mama likes it when you're in the pool because you don't weigh as much, and she can play around with you. <laughs> Pam knew Jeffrey was unlike other babies right from the start. When he was born, I knew pretty much right away that th something had gone wrong. He had a lot of issues, so I wasn't able to hold him. So at that point, I just wanted to keep him alive. Jeffrey pulled through, but soon it became clear that he was not developing at a normal rate. There he is with both his sisters. I love that picture. At age three, Jeffrey was a toddler. His stepsisters, Gwen, age 10, and Tiffany, age eight, were growing normally. Seven years later, Gwen and Tiffany were in high school, but 10-year-old Jeffrey remained as small as a five-year-old boy. By the time he was 19, his stepsisters were now adults, but Jeffrey still hadn't reached puberty. Jeffrey has not really changed at all. You can see he was 20. He's 29 now and changed. Jeffrey requires full-time care, so Pam has dedicated her life to looking after her son. There we go. There you go. Ain't mama's changed more diapers than anybody in her whole life. He's 29 years old. There's 365 days in the year. I change him about four or five times a day. I imagine that's about 40,000 diapers. That's a lot of diapers. I'm a professional diaper changer. He may be small in size, but Jeffrey's appetite is as big as an adult's. One of his favorites is peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Normal 29-year-old would probably have a glass of milk with it, but not Jeffrey. He has it on top. I know the way Jeffrey communicates. Over the years, I've picked up on his little gestures and his little sounds. Mama's going to give you more. Mama's going to give you more. Wouldn't ya? Jeffrey's usually finished eating, he'll put his hand up. Sometimes that just means a burp. After 29 years, despite his disabilities, Jeffrey has developed a way to communicate with his mom. In Montana, eight-year-old Gabby is also getting lessons in communication, but her skills are far less advanced. You almost had it. Once a week, a specialist teacher comes to her home. We're teaching her to interact more and be able to understand that she can make things happen herself. There you go. Good girl. We don't know what she necessarily takes in or doesn't take in. So we want to make sure we give her every opportunity to be learning anything that may be out there to learn. Gabby's condition has caused her brain to develop abnormally, affecting her speech, her motor skills, and her sight. Technically, they've told us that she has what they call cortical blindness, which means that even if her eyes worked properly, her brain can't, you know, transfer those images to know what they are. I see her often, you know, reacting to sunlight hitting her or when someone's walking by, I think she can see lights, I think she can see shadows. She's not blind, she can at least see lights. Despite her schooling, Gabby's ability to communicate remains limited, but the hope is that over time it will improve. In teaching her these things or helping her being stimulated by other things, maybe she is learning how to do things in her day-to-day -day life. There's a duck out there. See the duck? There's a duck. Jeffrey is now too old to go to school. So Pam finds ways to stimulate and teach him herself with daily outings. 
As he's only four feet tall, he rides in a child's stroller. I love it because I can still love on him and hold him like he's like a baby and cuddle with him. <laughs> I couldn't do all that if he was a normal size of a 29-year-old. And the mama never thought she'd be swinging around you at 29. Huh. Doctors have never been able to explain the cause of Jeffrey's mysterious condition. And Pam has been content to just take care of her son, keeping him as healthy as possible. I didn't try and find out what was going on with Jeffrey because health-wise, the doctors had told me that his lungs, his heart, all of that was healthy. He was the way he was. Nothing that the doctors could say or do was going to change that. Coming up, Pam decides to search for answers after Jeffrey is rushed to the hospital. I tell him I lose it. And Dr. Walker's research takes an unexpected turn. It's a very rare phenomenon to find. Jeffrey, a 29-year-old man in the body of a 10-year-old, is out for a drive with his parents. Jeffrey loves the T-Bird. I think he likes the most the wind blowing through his hair, the stimulation that he gets. Jeffrey lives with a rare medical condition that has slowed his growth and development, leaving him facing each day functioning like a child. He hasn't had any serious illness throughout his life. So Pam has never tried to find out exactly why Jeffrey wasn't growing. But last year, that all changed. Jeffrey was rushed to the hospital after suffering an acute attack of pneumonia. I thought maybe I might lose him. That was the first time in a long time that I thought I might lose him. And, but anyway, I knew but he was a strong old boy. So I, I, I knew I had that going for me. Um, but anyway, he, he fought those 10 days, and he, um, he went through a hard time. Ready to get out of here? Jeffrey recovered, but Pam realized it was time to find out what lay behind Jeffrey's condition and see if there was anything that could be done. I'd like to know now some answers about Jeffrey, so I might have a little bit of an idea about his life expectancy. What happened to Jeffrey? Why is Jeffrey the way he is? Now, Dr. Walker has offered to look into Jeffrey's case, so Pam might finally find out why her son hasn't ever reached adulthood. I'm really excited to have the opportunity to work with Jeffrey. What we're going to do is we're going to actually begin some genetic testing. Dr. Walker is planning tests to analyze Jeffrey's chromosomes to see if his genes can provide the clues to why he isn't aging. I hope to be able to give Jeffrey's parents uh, the answer to his condition. Is that a genetic basis for his condition? We should be able to find that out. Cases like Jeffrey's and Gabby's are extremely rare. So for Dr. Walker, this is an extraordinary opportunity to compare two similar conditions. And now, three and a half thousand miles away in northern Brazil, Dr. Walker has discovered another family whose child has lived for many years with almost identical symptoms. Like Jeffrey and Gabby, Odinechi do Nascimento has never grown up. She lives on a farm in the middle of the countryside with her father Raimundo and stepmom Dora. Odinechi is the passion of my life, my biggest treasure. I love being with Odinechi because she's an angel, a pearl. She's wonderful. Each day, Dora goes through the same morning routine, caring for Odinechi as if she were a baby. She has baby's features. Her hair is the same as a baby. She has a baby's body. Incredibly, Odinechi is 31 years old. She weighs a tiny 29 pounds, 
over five times smaller than the average 31-year-old woman. She can see, hear, and walk by herself, but is still dependent on Dora for everything. Today, Dora is also taking care of Odinecci's one-year-old niece, Maria. Despite being 30 years younger, Maria is the same size as Odinecci, who is still only three feet tall. She may be small in stature, but Dora is convinced Odinecci knows she's different to other girls her size. She believes she is a woman. She likes to look pretty, to wear jewelry, to brush her hair. She is quite vain. If you paint her nails, she won't let anyone touch her hands in case they get smudged. Despite her size, Odinecci has developed some adult behavior. She likes to clean the house. She just picks up the brush and starts sweeping. She even takes the trash out. <laughs> like any other 31-year-old, when the work is over, she likes to have fun. As soon as she hears the music, she dances. If I don't stop her, she'll dance until she drops. For over 30 years, her family have been puzzled by Odinecci's inability to age. Now, Dr. Walker is preparing to examine Odinecci. I'm quite excited, actually, to find Odinecci and to compare her to the other subjects that we have, which, because there are very few, is a very rare phenomenon to find. Dr. Walker hopes to discover the reason for Odinecci's slowed growth. But he also wants to find out if she can help him understand Jeffrey and Gabby's conditions. Two years ago, Dr. Walker began tests to sequence Gabby's DNA in the hope of discovering why she wasn't growing and aging. Now, with two new cases to compare to Gabby's, he wants to examine her in person, so her family is planning a trip to Florida. So we're going to start in Billings, and where are we going to end up? Florida. Florida. So, there it is. Florida. What are we going to Florida for? To see Dr. Walker. And why are we going to see Dr. Walker for? He's going to try to figure out what's wrong with Gabby. Yeah. Still, the question remains, why is Gabby who she is? You know, where did she come from? One question that I think I still have that I would like answered is whether what Gabrielle has in her condition is hereditary. Is it something that our other children, when they have children, would, would need to think about? Coming up. I think Grand Margaret's nervous about the trip. My kids have never flown anywhere. We've driven to Minnesota in a car. And Pam must face her fears, or her search for answers will be over. How much blood do we have to take? How many times are you going to have to pump my little boy? Eight year old Gabby weighs only 11 pounds. She lives with a rare condition that has slowed her growth and development. I just want to make sure we have everything before we put it in. Her family is packing for a trip to Florida, where they hope aging specialist Dr. Richard Walker will finally be able to give them some answers about why Gabby is growing so slowly. It's easier to pack Gabby clothes because they're so small that I can pack more. I don't have to worry. <laughs> the trip to Florida will be the first time Gabby and her five brothers and sisters have ever been on a plane. We've really never gone anywhere big besides we've driven to Minnesota in a car. I think Mary Margaret's nervous about the trip, but uh, what mother wouldn't be, you know, first time on a plane with all of her children. So she hides it really well, but I know she is. What, you know, she's a mom. <laughs> My biggest worry is getting all this luggage in the car. <laughs> Williams to Florida! Get suitcases. Okay. By 5 p.m., the Williams family are ready to embark on a 2,000-mile flight across America. I hope we didn't forget anything. Excited for the kids. I'm a little nervous, but but a good, excited nervous. So, yay, we're on our way. 
It's the biggest trip of their lives, but worth it if doctors can finally solve the mystery of why Gabby isn't aging. At the All Children's Hospital, 29-year-old Jeffrey has come for medical tests to investigate why he's not growing properly. Blood samples need to be taken so doctors can carry out genetic testing. Can I have his date of birth, please? Even the nurse is confused about Jeffrey's real age. Uh, 116, 84. 84? Mm-hmm. Okay, because they have it as 94 on the labels. Okay. I don't like needles myself. But when it comes to Jeffrey, because he doesn't understand what's going on, so I was just like, let's get this over with. All right, big guy. One, two, three, little owie. The nurse's first attempt at getting blood is unsuccessful. Yeah, we're going to go down to the foot now. How much blood do we have to take? How many times are you going to have to poke my little boy? I don't like this. All right, and it's very sensitive, OK? All right, here we go. OK, here we go, baby doll. Okay. okay, Jones. All right. We're getting blood now and ever. Eventually, she's able to fill two tubes, enough for the tests to be done. That's it. That's it. I'm glad that the blood has been drawn and they can proceed with the genetic testing, and I hope we can get some answers. Dr. Walker has also commissioned a series of medical tests to investigate his third case, Audinecci, the 31-year-old Brazilian woman living in the body of a three-year-old. First, a set of x-rays of her skeleton. We're going to do x-rays to see if her bones are actually representative of a child or if, in fact, they're comparable to that of a 30-year-old adult. Next, he plans to look at Audinecci's chromosomes. The reason we're going to look at Audinecci's DNA is to, uh, to compare it with, the, with values we hope to get from our other subjects. This will give us some indication if we have a comparable syndrome or if they're all different. Once again, blood samples need to be taken to carry out the genetic tests. For Dora, it's a difficult moment watching Audinecci in pain. You feel nervous, have this, son? I hate to see her suffer. She's scared of needles, but that's what needs to be done. The blood is taken, but Odinecci is not happy. Coming up. And the striking thing about this x-ray is that it doesn't appear to be that of an adult woman. And Jeffrey's family finally get the answers they've been waiting for. And we're pretty sure that we've got the cause of this condition. Audinecci is a 31-year-old Brazilian woman trapped in the body of a three-year-old child. In Brazil and America, doctors have carried out a series of medical tests to investigate her rare condition. Now at the All Children's Hospital in Florida, Dr. Richard Walker is ready to analyze the results. Here we have a series of Audinecci's x-rays showing her skeletal system or cranium as well as her hand. Bone age is measured by looking at the hand. And, and the striking thing about this x-ray is that it doesn't appear to be that of an adult woman, 30-year-old woman. The x-ray suggests that we're looking at the hand of a younger person, perhaps even as young as 12 or 13 years. Dr. Walker looks to Audinecci's genetic tests to try to work out why she's not growing at a normal pace. When we looked at Audinecci's genetic tests, they came out absolutely normal. There's no indication of any kind of chromosomal abnormality. Like Audinecci, tests of Gabby's chromosomes also came back normal. This could mean they are suffering from the same syndrome. Or is there another reason for Audinecci's delayed growth? To answer this question, Dr. Walker turns to the results of his final test on Audinecci's hormone levels. We found that she was significantly deficient in many hormones, in fact, all of her hormones, but most especially in thyroid hormone, thyroid hormone being very important for growth and development. So I feel that we can attribute her condition to hormone deficiency rather than a genetic problem. Thyroid deficiency has starved Audinecci's body of the hormones required for growth. Fortunately, it's a condition that can be helped with hormone replacement medicine. Treatment will not make Audinecci grow much bigger, 
but the medicine should improve her health and development. I'm so happy. I feel like I might never stop laughing. To find out that my daughter is going to improve just like I dreamed of. Audinecci's family now know how to help her for the future. Will Dr. Walker also be able to provide Jeffrey's family with a diagnosis? Hiya, Jeff. How's it going, buddy? Jeffrey's chromosomes, the structures which contain his DNA, have been examined to determine why he isn't growing. Dr. Walker now has the results of the testing and is ready to explain what he's discovered. We're pretty sure that we've got the cause of his condition. What we found was that um, there is what's called a translocation, a chromosomal translocation, the loss of a piece of the chromosome from one and a gain from the other. Chromosomes contain the directions for how cells operate in the body. Some of Jeffrey's chromosomes are distorted, which would explain why he has developed and grown so slowly throughout his life. This type of translocation can cause uh, conditions that you see in Jeffrey. Slowed growth, uh, delayed development, neurological problems. Pam is beginning to understand why her son hasn't grown. But one important question remains. Can you tell anything about Jeffrey's lifespan, how long he may live? Jeffrey is in basically good health. His organs are fine. He is generally healthy. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that based on the fact that he has such slow growth, that he might live a very long time. Mm -hmm. So uh, you might plan to have him around for a long, long time. For Pam, these are the words she's been waiting to hear. The bond I have with Jeffrey, not everybody has that mother taking care of a baby all her life. I'm happy. I'll go home happy. Dr. Walker has been able to give Pam good news about Jeffrey's life expectancy and explain why he hasn't been growing at a normal rate. His condition is due to a chromosome imbalance compared to Ordinecci, whose lack of growth is caused by hormone deficiency. Gabby is younger and her condition is more complex. But Dr. Walker is determined to get her family some answers. A day after they left Montana, the Williams family have finally arrived in Tampa, Florida. Where are the mountains? Yeah. Do you see any mountains, Anthony? No. Look all around. No, There's like palm trees everywhere. Tomorrow, they meet Dr. Walker to discuss the results of Gabby's genetic testing. First, there's a big surprise for their kids. <laughs> the family's first ever trip to a beach. This is the Atlantic Ocean. Oh my gosh. The water is only 50 degrees, but that's not stopping the family from having their first ever swim in the ocean. Watch out, here it comes. Even Gabby gets to feel the water. Oh, sorry, buddy. When I put her hand in the water and the water hit it, she's pulling her hand out herself. It's beautiful. I love that she gets to experience this. It's way fun, way neat pretty emotional and, and satisfying and, and happy that she is in the ocean, touching the water. It's just, it's just great. It's a great day. That evening, thoughts turned to the family's meeting with Dr. Walker the next day. I don't know what we're gonna, what Dr. Walker is gonna tell us. Get a little butterflies in my stomach, but uh, I think that's probably normal. Kind of a big deal, you know. It's been eight years in the making here, and hopefully we'll have some some answers. I am feeling very tired and anxious for tomorrow. 
to go and meet Dr. Walker and find out what he has to tell us. Good night. Coming up, Jeffrey and Gabby's families get to meet each other. We're like a little doll baby. <laughs> And will Dr. Walker finally answer Gabby's parents' biggest question? Is this condition hereditary? Eight-year-old Gabby lives with a mystery condition that has slowed her growth to just one year in every eight. I know you're sleepy, but you gotta wake up. Her family have brought her all the way from Montana to meet Dr. Walker who they hope will explain why she remains the size of a six-month-old baby. Hi, Dr. Walker. Mr. and Mrs. Williams. Nice so to, meet nice you. to meet you. You Dr. also. Nice to sir. meet you. Two years ago, Dr. Walker sent Gabby's blood samples to a specialist lab where every microscopic gene in her DNA was sequenced. The investigation into the cause of her condition is ongoing, but now Dr. Walker wants to examine Gabby himself and share preliminary results with her family. It's like a miracle that she is eight years old, yet retains the appearance of a, of a little child, and, and her skin and the texture of it and everything yeah. is indicative of that. After years of studying Gabby's case, Dr. Walker finally has the chance to meet her in person. She is incredibly youthful looking, there, and her features are so much of a, of a young child, mm -hmm. but not an eight-year-old. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what we've done. I'm, thank you for letting me hold thank her. Thank you for holding her. What we have done to try to untangle this mystery is to fully sequence uh, Gabby's DNA. The sequencing analyzed over 20,000 genes. It can take only one to be missing or distorted to cause a genetic illness such as Gabby's. We've looked at all of the, all of the genes and found that within some there are some changes that uh, probably cause um, the condition that we see with her. The tests have found a flaw deep within Gabby's DNA that's a possible cause for her condition. Cases like Gabby's are so rare, it can take years of further testing to verify the results. But this could be a huge breakthrough in understanding this syndrome and narrowing down its cause. Now, face to face with Dr. Walker for the first time, Gabby's parents finally have the chance to discuss his findings. Is this condition hereditary? Is there a chance that our other children would pass this on. Recognizing the rarity of children like Gabby, uh, it's very unlikely. The probability of your daughters inheriting anything that would produce a child resembling Gabby is very, very unlikely. You have very minimal concern for your daughters to have a ch child like, uh, like Gabby. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. okay, good to know, good to know. Love you. Love you. Okay. Finding out that this condition will not be passed down to our grandchildren was a huge relief. It was nice to know that that would not happen to our grandchildren. I guess it's just one of those things that you just take a deep breath and say, we can cross that problem off our list. We're good. A lot of other problems we may have to deal with in the future, but that's when we can cross off our list. Gabby, Jeffrey, and Audinecci are all aging at an extremely slow pace. The causes are all different, but studying these remarkable conditions may bring doctors one step closer to understanding why we all grow old. I think that these three cases give us the opportunity to understand the mechanism for aging. The investigation into Gabby's genes continues. The findings could have enormous implications for us all. If we could find the gene that controls aging, we would be able to reduce the incidence of cancer, diabetes, stroke, heart attacks. All of those things are the result of the consequences of aging. The Williams family at last have some answers. Meeting Dr. Walker has dispelled their fears that Gabby's condition might be hereditary. Now, before flying home to Montana, they have an opportunity to meet another unique family with a child who isn't aging. Hello! Hi, yeah. John. I'm Pam. Hi, Pam. Nice to meet you. This is Jeffrey. Hi, Jeffrey. Hi, Jeff. How are you, buddy? 
As they're in Florida, Dr. Walker has put the Williams family in contact with Pam and her 29-year-old son, Jeffrey. So how old is Jeffrey? He's uh, 29. 29. Wow, isn't that something amazing? Well, I'd love to hold her. Sure, okay. sure. Let's get her out. Hey, Daddy. Hey, you are like a little doll baby. <laughs> you are just adorable. Yeah. Pam has organized a trip for the Williams kids, unlike anything they'd get in Montana. There it is, again! There's another one! There it is, there it is. Oh, there it is right there! Right there! Look at that That's a big one, too. The boat ride is a chance for the two moms to share their experiences of raising children with such rare conditions. Let me see how strong he is. Oh, yeah. Goodness gracious. He has his stomach. He will do push-ups. Seeing Gabby and Jeffrey together made me realize that there's another mother out there that knows the way I feel about always taking care of a baby. And they have a lot of similarities, which is nice. And look at that good, thick head of hair. Daddy cuts it. It's good. Oh, I bet. I bet are hard. It's always kind of a nice feeling to know that there's other people out there that share our same feelings and our same struggles. This is a perfect ending to our week and it's just been wonderful.